Hello and welcome to um, our service, um, Sunday morning service at Bethel Baptist. Uh, we're based in Sly and we give you a warm welcome as we meet together to worship God and to sing his praises, read from the Bible and, and to look at it in a bit more depth. Um, so we pray that you will um, find this time encouraging and maybe challenging and uh, love to hear from you. So if you do want to get involved, um, please drop us a comment at the bottom of the YouTube video or or um, from uh, the contact details on our website. But we're really glad that you're with us. Let me pray as we start, and then we'll sing our first hymn together. Let me pray. Father, thank you for this time. We just pray for that you will bless us as we seek to worship you. Through your Holy Spirit, Father, we pray that you will teach us from your word and encourage us as we meet together. Amen. Let's sing, shall we, our first uh, hymn this morning. And it's, uh, oh Lord my God, let's sing together.
As I said at the beginning, um, we're a Bible-based church and, and uh, we find that God's Word, the Bible, is the most important book in our lives. Uh, and we believe that God speaks to us through his Word. I'm going to read um, from the Gospel of John this morning. And we're going to be looking at John chapter 12 and the first 11 verses. So let me read John chapter 12 verses 1 to 11. Six days before the Passover, Jesus therefore came to Bethany, where Lazarus was, whom Jesus had raised from the dead. So they gave a dinner for him there. Martha served, and Lazarus was one of those reclining with him at the table. Mary, therefore, took a pound of expensive ointment made from pure nard, and anointed the feet of Jesus, and wiped his feet with her hair. The house was filled with the fragrance of perfume. But Judas Iscariot, one of his disciples, he who was about to betray him, said, Why was this ointment not sold for 300 denarii and given to the poor? He said this not because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. And having charge of the money bag, he used to help himself to what was put into it. Jesus said, Leave her alone, so that she may keep it for the day of my burial. For the poor you always have with you, but you do not always have me. When the large crowd of the Jews learned that Jesus was there, they came, not only on account of him, but also to see Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. So the chief priests made plans to put Lazarus to death as well, because on account of him, Many of the Jews were going away and believing in Jesus. Amen. <clears throat> Let's continue to worship God, shall we, as we turn to him in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. Thank you that we'll be able to read it. We pray, Lord, that you'll help us to understand uh, what you want us to learn from it. Lord, we thank you for the words of the Lord Jesus. And we pray, Father, that you will help us to maybe get a, a glimpse of him and of his wonder and of his glory. Lord, we just pray too for, for one another, Lord, for, for those who are going through so many different things, those who are unwell, Father, those who are mourning, those who are um, feeling far from you. We pray that you will draw close and be to them everything that they need. Lord, we, we've seen the news just this week and we realise of the, the ongoing conflict in Ukraine and, uh, and Russia. We, we pray for your peace there. We pray for your church there. We pray for those who are suffering and struggling there. But also too, Lord, we, we've seen the, the reports of the, the terrible earthquake in Turkey and Syria and the, the devastation and the loss of life and the conditions that people are, are in. And we pray again for, for the aid to get through and to, to get to the right places where it will have the most impact for good we pray for your churches there and again lord pray as they they reach out with humanitarian aid lord they will reach out with the good news of the gospel and your holy spirit will open blind eyes to see the wonder of the lord jesus and lord we we just pray for this world in which we live or when we see such turmoil and devastation and heartache and father we pray that you will as only you can bring blessing through your spirit, because of your son. So Father, we pray now, help us as we, we seek to learn more today um, from your word. In Jesus' name, amen. We're going to sing our next hymn, and it's My Jesus, I Love Thee. Let's sing together.
Have you ever looked at something, or more likely someone, and thought, what a waste. What a waste. That sounds a bit harsh, doesn't it? That's exactly, that's exactly what I've done this last week. Um, for those of you who don't know and maybe are following from further afield, I'm Welsh and I'm proud Welshman and I love rugby and I've been saddened by the way that we've been playing recently, but that's another story. And because of uh, my love of rugby, I get lots of rugby stuff. You know, on social media feeds. Once you've you've shown a liking, then it seems to bombard you. Well, this week just gone, um, uh, I was, or oh, it popped up on my social feed of a particular now retired uh, rugby player. I thought, oh yeah, I remember. I remember that particular rugby player. And then, as you do, you you see some clips of them playing, and you're just uh, blown away by how skillful they were, uh, how fast they were, what a good kicker they were, what a good time, just, just they were amazing. Unfortunately, at least in, I suppose in my eyes, they just didn't seem to fulfil their potential. And I just remember as I, as I was looking at some of these, these videos thinking, what a waste, what a waste of talent. Could have been so much more, so much bigger, so much better, but what a waste. <coughs> and in case you thought it was uh, just me, um, these are some of the comments I'm going to read for you that, that were against, or, uh, against this player. Very good player. It's a pity it all went to his head. He could have been great. Such a pity. A magnificent talent who never reached his full potential. Had more clubs than Arnold Palmer. Huge shame that we didn't see him at Max Thottle. A true talent. Could have taken the world by storm, but never reached his potential. And pretty much every comment against him was, oh, what a pity, what a waste, what a waste. Well, our passage this morning is really an account of how not to waste your life. It's also, I suppose, a, a story about motivation. What do you do? Why do you do what you do for the Lord? Do you serve him for the, for the satisfaction you get when you see the results? Do you find it satisfying, satisfying to, to see him use you? Well, perhaps that's the wrong motivation. Do you serve him because, because it helps others? Again, yeah, it's gratifying to see others helped. But again, I suggest that's the wrong motivation for serving Jesus. See, the, the true motivation for serving Christ is because he is worthy of everything we, you can do for him. And because you love him and want to please him because he gave himself for you on the cross. We actually learn a lot about this from, from Mary's act of devotion. Um, but that even in this passage, John contrasts Mary's act of devotion with, with Judas's self-centred focus and with the, the evil plans of the chief priests who now not only want to kill Jesus, but also Lazarus, whose resurrection was resulting in in lots of people coming and believing in Jesus. And really this, this account illustrates the Jesus' words that we find in, in Mark 8. For whoever wishes to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake and the gospel will save it. For what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and yet forfeit his soul? And John and Jesus goes on to repeat this, this thought, this idea later on, we didn't read it today, in John uh, 12 verse 25 where he says, He who loves his life loses it, and he who hates his life in this world will keep it to life eternal. Mary, Mary de denied herself, if you like, use that term, hated her life, so to speak, for Jesus' sake, by her 
extravagant act of devotion to him. And she gained that which could not be taken from her. Whereas Judas greedily wished that he could, he could have pocketed some of Mary's gift. In a few days he would, he would sell out Jesus for a, a paltry psalm. Some, but he forfeited his soul. Friends, you will not waste your life if you spend it in selfless devotion to Christ. Let me say that again. You will not waste your life if you spend it in selfless devotion to Jesus. I suppose you could put it another way. Waste your life on Jesus is to save your life. Oh, but, but be warned. Selfless devotion... Yeah, it's costly. Mary, Mary's anointing of, of Jesus with this perfume was costly in, in at least three ways. Financially was one. And I suppose it begs the question, do I treasure Jesus more than things, more than my stuff? More than my house, my sports car, my jewellery, whatever it may be. The perfume that that Mary had here was clusters called pure nard and it was a, a spice that came from the Himalayas right in the far north of India and so it had to be imported to to Israel at huge cost now I, I, we don't know where Mary got this this actually this big jar a pound 12 ounce jar of perfume maybe, maybe it was a family heirloom that had been passed down Judas had looking at it estimates that it could have been sold for for 300 denarii and that that was in those days equivalent to about 300 days wages just think about that figure on i think our minimum wage in the uk is about 10 pound 42 an hour well think about that think about 300 eight hour days this perfume was worth in the region of £25,000. That's a huge amount of money. Any way you figure it, Mary's action was extravagantly costly. Judas and the disciples who, according to the other Gospels, joined him in, in scolding Mary. Surely they were only being sensible. Yes, yeah, she, she could have sold the perfume. She could have, she could have given 90% of it to, to the poor and... And then poured the 10% out on Jesus' feet and no one would have been any of the wiser. It still would have been a costly gift. But were they being really sensible? Jesus actually rebukes them in verse 8. He says, for you always have the poor with you, but you do not always have me. Now he's not saying that we shouldn't help the poor, far from it. But he was saying, I am more worthy of your unselfish devotion than all of the world's poor put together he was accepting the worship that Mary gave him because she rightly saw that he is worthy of all that we can give him and more a favourite hymn by Isaac Watts when I survey the wondrous cross has these lines were there the, were the whole realm of nature mine that were a present far too small love so amazing so divine Demands my soul, my life, my all. That's it, isn't it? That's the point. Everything for Christ. So yeah, devotion, devotion to Jesus will cost you. Will cost you financially. If he brought you with his blood, you don't own anything. Everything we have is his. And he can direct you to give some or, or all of it for his kingdom purposes. Perhaps most of us, most of us would have sold the perfume and maybe given the 10% to the Lord. Maybe, maybe would have pocketed the rest and bought a, a more up-to-date mule, I don't know. But Mary, Mary gave it all because she knew that Jesus was worth it. But do I... But do I treasure Jesus more than my pride? Both Matthew and Mark say that, 
that Mary anointed Jesus' head, but, but John says that, that she anointed his feet. There, there's no contradiction if she anointed both. Matthew and, and Mark mention Jesus' head because the, the anointing the head was significant of kingship. John mentions her anointing Jesus' feet because it was the, the lowly task of a servant to wash a guest's feet. In the next chapter in John's Gospel, Jesus, Jesus washes the disciples' feet in, a, in an act of great humility that we should follow. But Mary, we read, didn't use a towel. Rather, she, she wiped the Lord's feet with her hair. Respectable Jewish women would never let their hair down in public. In fact, it was considered a, a mark of a woman with loose morals. But Mary was so caught up with her devotion to Christ that she didn't even stop to consider what others might think of her. Back in the Old Testament, you have a similar picture with, with David dancing before the Lord wearing a, an ephod. Read about it in 2 Samuel 6. And Mary, just the same, just cast public opinion to the wind, let down her hair and wiped Jesus' feet. David's fervent devotion embarrassed his wife. But the Lord stood with David. Mary's action made the apostles uncomfortable. And yet Jesus sided with Mary. So perhaps we need to ask ourselves today, do I treasure Jesus more than my pride? Or am I concerned about what others think of me? Will they think that I'm a zealot? Will they think I'm a, a religious fanatic? But what really matters is what, what Jesus thinks about your selfless devotion to him. Do I, do I treasure Jesus more than my reputation? Judas led the attack. But other disciples, we read, echoed his criticism. In Matthew 26 verse 8 it says, But the disciples were indignant when they saw this and said, Why this waste? They were only being pragmatic and, and, and sensible. The money yet could have benefited many poor families, but instead, but instead it was all wasted on Jesus. Or was it wasted? Friends, if you give yourselves without reserve to Jesus, you, you will be criticised. And the loudest criticism may well come from church members who will say that they're, they're only using common sense in how the Lord's resources are spent. When, when Jim Elliot and set his, his sights on going to that unreached tribe in, in Ecuador, his Christian's parents asked him to consider whether his gifts could be better used among the, the young people in America. But he replied with a scathing denunciation of the lukewarm American church. He went to South America, where he and his friends were murdered, trying to, to reach a lost, savage tribe and tell them about the love of the Lord Jesus. They wasted, some would say, their lives for Jesus. Selfless devotion stems from Really, doesn't it, from, from personal love and gratitude. Although the, the text doesn't, doesn't state it directly, Mary's action obviously stemmed from her love for Jesus. And yet her gratitude for, for him raising her brother from the dead. Uh, and we'd already read back in, in John 11 that, that Jesus loved Mary and Martha and Lazarus and that they loved Jesus. And friends, love for Jesus should be all... The motive should be the motive in all that we do for him. Judas put up this front, maybe wore a mask that said he was concerned about the poor. But even if he'd given some of the money to the poor, he would not have been motivate, motivated by love for Christ. Our people can give huge sums of money to the Lord's work, but their real motive may be that they want others to know 
just how generous they are. And, and I suppose even within Christian circles, some, some organisations will, will cater to this by naming a building perhaps after a, a generous donor or, you know, or, or telling a generous donor they could have a, a plaque on a wall letting everyone know that they donated. But as we read the Bible, we see that, that Jesus looks on the, the hidden motives of our hearts, not on our outward actions. We're seeing that selfless devotion is costly. It stems from love and gratitude towards Jesus. But also it flows from knowing Jesus personally. Chapter 12, verse 7 in John's Gospel is, yeah, it's, it's difficult to interpret. It says this, therefore Jesus says, let her alone so that she may keep it for the day of my burial. Mary had just poured out the precious perfume so she couldn't keep it to anoint Jesus after he died. And how much she did understand about Jesus' impending death when none of the disciples saw it coming. The meaning may be that that Mary had not sold the perfume as, Jesus, as Judas and the disciples had proposed so that she could keep it for anointing Jesus' body in the anticipation of his death. Perhaps from her, her time at, at sitting at Jesus' feet while he's taught, perhaps Mary had some, some sense that Jesus was about to die or, or in maybe the providence of God, she may have anointed him unwittingly. But whatever the case, Mary knew more about the infinite worth of Jesus than even the disciples did at this point. Her personal knowledge of Jesus, gained by sitting at his feet, led her to this selfless act of devotion. If you want to follow Mary's example of devotion to Jesus, you have to follow her example of sitting at Jesus' feet listening to his word. I think I said last time, every time, every time we encounter Mary in the Gospels, she's sitting at Jesus' feet. First learning from him, then pouring out her sorrow to him, and now expressing her, her love and her devotion to him. Friends, you won't love Jesus as you should unless you spend time sitting at his feet. And you do that by, by spending time in the word, reading the Bible and in prayer. Yeah, selfless devotion results in action. Mary just didn't think about this radical display of love, but then allow reason to prevail and, and not to go through with it. Rather, she... She, she did it. Our good intentions are nice, but it takes good actions to produce results. So Mary wasted, some would say, her life by this selfless devotion to Jesus. But there's more to this account than just that. The other side of that equation is here too. You see, it's this, you will totally waste your life if you spend it on yourself. If all you can do is think about self, then that really is wasting your life. Judas and the, the Jewish leaders, they sought to kill both Jesus and Lazarus. They were acting out of selfish interests. Judas, well, he thought more money would bring more happiness. That's familiar today, isn't it? The Jewish leaders, they wanted to hang on to their power. Doesn't sound too far away from people today either, does it? Both these parties wasted their lives because they spent it on themselves. John tells us about Judas's greed in verse 6. He wasn't really concerned about the poor, but he was a thief. He had the, the purse, if you like. When we used to go away on holiday, we'd have a, a housekeeping purse and we'd all put money into it. And when we came to buying food, we would take it out of the purse. Well, Judas carried the purse. He carried the money box. And he used to help himself to what was in there. 
If Mary had given her perfume to sell and given to the poor, some of that money would have ended up in Judas's pocket. Perhaps, perhaps Judas had joined this, uh, uh, the apostles because he thought that, hey, if Jesus becomes king, oh, wow, then perhaps I would be in a good position, he thought, within the kingdom. Oh, I could get my hands on some, some good stuff. Oh, but now the future looked dim. Jesus kept, kept talking about his death, not his reign. And this incident, if you like, maybe it was the last straw, wherever it pushed Judas over the top. When Jesus came to, to Mary's defence with more talk about his death, what does Judas do? He decides to go to the authorities and betray Jesus. Just for a measly 30 pieces of silver, Judas sold his soul. And the chief priests, irrationally, they, they wanted to kill both the author of life and the man who was raised from the dead because they both threatened their, their hold on their power, on their influence. Judas, Judas and the the Jewish leaders wasted their lives because they spent it on themselves. Remember what Jesus will say in verse 25, I've quoted it already. He who loves his life loses it. Mary's action reveals the proper basis for evaluating your action and my actions. Did you do what you did because you love and treasure Jesus? She didn't do what she did out of duty or pragmatism, but out of sheer devotion for Christ. Mary did what she did because she had a maybe a perception of Christ that even the apostles lacked at this point. She knew that he was worthy of extravagant love. And she gained this knowledge of Jesus by sitting at his feet. When Jesus, when Jesus is your treasure, you will spend your life in selfless devotion to him. Amen. Let's sing, shall we, our last hymn today. All I once held dear. Let's sing together.
As I said at the beginning, it'd be great to hear from you. Um, so feel free to get in touch. And, uh, let me pray as we close. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for this, this amazing account of Mary's selfless devotion to the Lord Jesus. Pray, Lord, that we will, we will act in the same way towards our Saviour because we love him. And he is worthy of, of all of us, of all our love and all our devotion. Father, just through your Holy Spirit, encourage us, we pray, in Jesus' name. Amen. It's been lovely to have you with us. Pray that you'll know God's help and God's blessing in the coming days. Take care. Goodbye.